Hello and welcome to The Harvest Show. Glad you could be with us for this hour and trust that you're going to find some inspiration, something that will touch your heart and soul uh, as we continue through the program today. Stefan Radlich here alongside Valerie Lowe and the president and CEO of La Cie Broadcasting, Mr. Peter Sumrall. Good to see you back. You're out for a it's few good. days. Yeah, went to uh, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. so got a little congestion thing going, but <clears throat> excuse me, went to Washington, D.C. and would, uh, had some great meetings yesterday. Now, uh, in D.C., obviously, you're there on behalf of Christian broadcasting right. in general mm -hmm. and, and religious programming in general. Uh, what are some of the, uh, the, the trends, the news? What, are, what is the importance of such a trip? Uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with some uh, regulatory issues regarding mm -hmm. uh, some satellite programming. Uh, as well as uh, our broadcast stations. And mm -hmm. so talk to members of Congress, you know, about uh, what we can do about that, whether it's to write the FCC, a strongly worded letter, right. or to introduce legislation uh, mm -hmm. and uh, have their support. So mm -hmm. uh, it, there's a variety of issues that we talk about every time we go. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also talk about Feed the Hungry and uh, met up, for instance, with Senator Vitter uh, from uh, New Orleans area, mm -hmm. uh, talked about how Feed the Hungry was there last Thanksgiving, dis right. di distributing food boxes, and uh, talked to Congressman Carson from Indianapolis about mm -hmm. how we d distributed food boxes there and uh, at Christmas time, so yeah. it was good. Good, yeah. very good. Uh, when it comes to D.C., before we came out, mm -hmm. we were chatting a little yeah. bit, as we often do, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you brought out a point that you know Congress has maybe some of the lowest approval ratings mm -hmm. in, right. in history, mm -hmm. and the image that's portrayed is that there's just a bunch of men and women there who just can't see eye to eye on anything, but you said they actually they get quite a bit of work done. Uh, they really do get a lot of work done. It really was kind of interesting yesterday. Uh, I've been there before where uh, it didn't seem like it was very busy. Mm -hmm. But this time in particular, they were voting all day long on stuff. I don't know what they were voting on. Uh, but they were voting all day long on stuff, and they've got little bells that goes off in their offices when they have to run down to the floor and cast a vote. Oh, okay. So, so what's your overall impression of them now that you, you've had a chance to see it for yourself as opposed to listening to the news? Well, I think a lot of the uh, news media is very negative about mm -hmm. Congress. Excuse me again. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that's very challenging. Um, mm -hmm. They're not dealing with major big issues like immigration or right. global warming or the budget. <clears throat> but uh, they're dealing with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the people that we meet with, uh, they're, they're really great people. Uh, you know, most are good, solid people, good Christians, <clears throat> support Christian television. Yeah love what we do, um, and, uh, you know, we're very supportive of them. Mm. Well, it's good to hear something good coming out of Washington, <laughs> and Mr. Summerall goes to Washington, comes back with a good report, so yeah. very good uh, for that. Excuse me for my voice this morning. <laughs> it's okay. I uh, want to just touch base on this story. Pastor Saeed Abdeni, whom we've mentioned before, mm -hmm. and, and you may recognize his name from, from elsewhere, but uh, Iranian-American pastor who's been imprisoned in Iran for uh, quite some time now. I think it's going on two years or a little bit more, possibly. Uh, his wife, uh, Sidith, has been leading a campaign here in the United States for some time mm -hmm. of awareness and trying to get uh, you know, governmental powers to provide pressure to uh, see that her husband gets released. But uh, the newest story is that he needed surgery, and uh, he's being denied surgery at an Iranian hospital uh, where he's being shackled and held in captivity at this point as opposed to a prison because of uh, some medical condition there. But it just goes to show the, mm -hmm. you know, how important it is for us as, as believers uh, here in the United States, around the world, when things are going well for us, we cannot forget uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ where they're in times of trouble and, and, and persecution. That's right, who are truly being persecuted. And I think it's so important that we keep this uh, type of news at the forefront mm -hmm. because we can't, of course, uh, depend on mainstream media to bring this to the forefront. Yes, he is shackled, but there seems to be this new, every now and then, like every so many months, Christian organizations will go in and bring it back to mm -hmm. our attention so that Pastor Saeed could possibly, um, at one point, it looked like he was going to be released. Right. But mm -hmm. the Iranian government seems to back down. There. Back down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important for, uh, you know, ministries like we'll see broadcasting mm -hmm. to exist because uh, there are places where you just can't go and, right. and share the gospel or build a church or hand out books or, you know, whatever, put, a, put a broadcast on the air locally, but through the uh, avenues of like Middle East television or shortwave radio, That's right. uh, the gospel signal can get into these types of places. <clears throat> you know, one of the unique things we're doing in Israel, for instance, is we have several local churches mm -hmm. that are on the air on Middle East television. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do that. There, yeah. There's mm -hmm. no way they could ever get time 
on an Israeli channel. And so uh, we have opportunity that a lot of people don't have, especially with shortwave radio, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to Middle East television and the Internet. Yeah. And, you know, Pete, sometimes we may <laughs> take it for granted in the West that, I mean, you can turn on the television mm -hmm. and watch Christian TV all the time, 24-7. Mm -hmm. But in other countries, if it were not for METV, they simply would not hear the message. That's true. That's very true. And, and I, so we're very thankful for that. And I know. And that's why we come to you from time to time to say to help support METV. I know this month mm -hmm. our focus is spread the word. Right. That's when we're sending Bibles out around the world. I mean, you can't go wrong. You want to leave a legacy, you know, send a Bible to someone. And what's unique, when I first started working here, here's the thing that impressed me the most, Pete, that the ministry is willing to send just one Bible mm -hmm. clear across the world yeah. to one person. So it's not like we send out tons and tons. Once someone re uh, requests That's a right. Bible, we send them out. What's really fulfilling is to get the thank you letters back. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> yes. really is so cool. Yeah. So uh, it's really a blessing. And with Spread the Word, I believe we're kind of across that 700,000 Bible threshold <laughs> since the program began. And just to think about that, that those Bibles have gone out for the most part, one by one, to That's people right. who've been hungry for the Word of God. They've heard through shortwave radio or satellite television or METV that you can get your own Bible if you just simply ask for one. And uh, they've been asking oh, people from over 190 nations have written or emailed in asking for their own copy of the Word of God. It's a great blessing. It's it really a good is. ministry. Amen. Well, if you'd like to be a part of it, you see a number on the bottom of your screen. That's our prayer line number. But you can also call in and say, hey, I'd like to get in on sending Bibles out around the world or become a partner with Lassie Broadcasting. Still to come, singer and songwriter Ellie Holcomb talks about the power of God to reach the brokenhearted. And she joins us live in Studio B with some new music today. Also in today's Bible teaching, Pastor David E. Summerall continues his series on the fundamentals of faith in part four of Walking on the Water. And later on in the program, Brian Bush joins us with a report on the latest news that's coming out of the Middle East. But up next, here's our international news. Today is Thursday, March 13, 2014. I'm Bob Nagel in for Chuck Freeby with this check on international news. A plane sent on Thursday to check on the spot where Chinese satellite images showed possible debris from a missing Malaysian jetliner found nothing. A Malaysian civil aviation spokesman said we were there and there's nothing to report. That news was deflating at least to those awaiting any news after day six of the search. Countries involved in the search have called for more information coordination in the days ahead. 239 people were on board the plane that left Kuala Lumpur heading for Beijing, China. Families and friends continue to wait for any news, but reports that the Malaysian airline company uh, has been less than helpful at times. All involved are out of patience. Some reports say that Boeing, who monitors all flights with their engines, said that their engineers say the plane's engines might have run for four hours after the plane dropped from the radar screen. The search area has been expanded over the past few days, but as yet no news appears to be bad news, with any hopes of finding anyone alive slipping by the hour. In all, over 100 planes and ships have joined that search effort. Officials say two people have died amid clashes that erupted in Istanbul, Turkey, and in other cities following a funeral of a teenager who died nine months after being hit by a police-fired tear gas canister. The Istanbul governor's office said a 22-year-old man died in the fighting between two groups of youths late on Wednesday as police fired water cannons and tear gas to prevent crowds from reaching the city's main square after the burial of a 15-year-old young man named Birkin Elvan. In a southern city in Turkey, a police officer died of a heart attack during the clash there. Demonstrators clashed with police in Istanbul, Turkey in the early hours of Thursday morning after mourning Elvan, a teenager who succumbed to injuries suffered during a street protest last year. A dozen protesters hurled firecrackers and stones at police. Tens of thousands had been involved in marches as the youngster's coffin was carried to his final resting place. Chaos in Turkey has been a regular guest since crackdowns by police on the order of the government. An election on March 30th is prompting much of the unrest. Residents in Kiev on Thursday thought threatened United States economic sanctions on Russia would not make a big difference to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Residents said Putin wants a war and doesn't care about the lives of the people or their children. 
Others said Putin brings chaos and lawlessness to the world. The sanction package was advanced by the United States Senate Committee on Wednesday as President Barack Obama met with Ukraine's new prime minister at the White House. The Ukraine leader was in Washington seeking financial help to stabilize his fledgling government. The Senate bill guaranteed at least $1 billion in loans. The measure will go to the full Senate later. The Senate will hold those possible or responsible rather for corruption on the Crimean Peninsula culpable for those economic penalties. The chief defense lawyer at Oscar Pistorius' murder trial on Thursday cross-examined a police analyst for a second day, challenging his analysis of a bullet-marked toilet door from the bathroom of Pistorius' home. He pointed out alleged missteps by the police. The attorney, as to the treatment of evidence in the investigation of the athlete's killing of his girlfriend, uh, claims that uh, fragments of the door went missing after it was taken into evidence by police. They were followed by more assertions uh, that questioned the reliability of the police investigation. Marks on the door created by a bat that was swung at the door raised questions about Pistorius' condition at the time. The amputee athlete who competed in the Olympic Games wearing spring metal prosthesis was claimed to be on his stumps when the attack occurred. His lawyer says he was bent over while wearing his prosthetic legs. What condition the runner was in could go a long way toward a verdict. Pistorius claimed he thought he was shooting at an intruder and not his girlfriend who died in that shooting. Three people were killed and a state trooper was seriously injured on an Ohio turnpike on Wednesday as a fast-moving late winter storm brought heavy snow to the Midwest and on into the Northeast. Snowy and windy conditions made it extremely difficult and dangerous for emergency equipment to reach the scene of the multi-vehicle accident in the eastbound lanes of the Ohio Turnpike between Toledo and Cleveland. Another series of pileups 10 miles to the east and the westbound lanes stopped traffic near Sandusky, Ohio. The injured state trooper was working in accident scene when he got pinned between two cars when another vehicle slid into them. Western New York was hit later in the day with heavy wet snow and winds that topped 40 miles per hour. The storm began to dissipate when it reached Canada, but left behind the heaviest snowfall some areas had seen all season. Well, coming up on Harvest, Brian Bush joins us from Jerusalem in Israel up to the minute. But next, Ellie Holcomb performs her song, The Broken Beautiful, live on Harvest. Many Christian ministries have desired to bring the gospel of Jesus to Israel, to proclaim his message of God's love to the villages and streets he walked while on this earth. Yet only one Christian network has been broadcasting the message of God's love to Israel for more than 10 years. By God's grace, Lassie Broadcasting has been bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the voices of many American ministries to every home in Israel via Middle East television. You can help this great work by becoming a partner in faith for as little as $25 a month. Call today. who I once was defined by all the things I've done afraid my shame would be exposed afraid of really being known but then you gave my heart a home so I walked out of the darkness and into the light from fear of shame into the hope of light Mercy come my name and made a way to fly Out of the darkness and in to the light Years of keeping secrets safe Wondering if I could change when you're hiding all alone Your heart can turn into a stone That's not the way I want to go So I walked out of the darkness and into the light From fear of shame into the hope of life Mercy come my name and darkness and then to the light there's no place I'd rather be your light is marvelous your light 
Christian music. Be sure to watch live from Studio B each week on this Lassie broadcasting station. Hello, I'm Dr. Harold Hazen. It's been a privilege to comb through Lester Sumrall's historic spoken and written teachings. Well, we have uncovered a diamond in the rough. It's a recording of two of Dr. Sumrall's sermons, his first shortwave message given from Quito, Ecuador in 1942 on immortality. And the other is his well-known sermon, Who Was at the Cross, given to a packed stadium in Managua, Nicaragua in 1995, just several months before God took Lester home. Both messages are inspiring and delivered by translators. Hey, uh, read Acts chapter 2. Entonces lea Hechos capítulo 2. And you find the same three. Now available on CD, you can have this for your best donation of any size to the Sea Broadcasting, or you can get five for a donation of $100 and give them as gifts to your friends. Get these classic bookend sermons, Dr. Summerall's Six Decades of Broadcast Ministry. Singer and songwriter Ellie Holcomb has always viewed music as a bridge builder. Her lyrics are designed to break down walls between perfect strangers. Ellie's first two projects were number one on iTunes Christian and Gospel Charts, and today she stops by to talk about her newest release, As Sure As The Sun. Welcome. Thank you so to Harvest, to be Ellie. Here. Okay, so your face just lit up when I brought up that little, that beautiful <laughs> daughter that you have. Oh, um, I love and it. I think you were expecting her while you were working on this project. That's right. Yeah, I uh, I started writing songs for this record, As Sure as the Sun, right around the same time that we found out that we were going to have a little baby. Okay. And so by the end of nine months, I had a little baby to hold, um, <laughs> who I love, and 45 new songs to sing. So wow. I know. Isn't it's that a crazy? long album. So, yeah, I, I know. We didn't, we didn't record all of them. But. I'm sure she had to inspire you. One little kick in the tummy. She said, Mom, here's what you have to say. Oh, man. I could, that must have been an incredible I could, it experience. It felt like I was really like growing a person and then at the same time creating this um, you know, body of work, uh, another baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, it was a joy. You know, I was reading your backstory and I was so impressed with um, where your lyrics come from. You mm. talk about in some of your other music how they come from the Psalms and the scriptures, of That's course. Right. Um, but some of your relatives and people you knew who were struggling with depression and you began to offer music to them That's to right. help kind of soothe their souls. Yeah, mm. I think I can tie almost every song to a friend that I've walked through something mm -hmm. um, difficult with. You know, I, I guess I'm at that age where I'm old enough to have friends really walk through some pretty intense stuff. But doesn't so. that produce, help you produce the most authentic, genuine work? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think it's, you know, it's in those places of trial and struggle, those valleys in our lives that I feel like sometimes our vision is sharpened to see our need for Jesus mm -hmm. and then to see his like 
great ability to meet our every need. Mm. And so I've been, my faith has been increased by walking with my friends through some of that exactly. Mm -hmm. It has just been so sweet to see him um, meet people in their most broken places, you know? Mm -hmm. So what an honor to get to walk alongside somebody mm. and then maybe sing them a song, you know, <laughs> along the way too. So. It sounds like, and, and even just listening to what we just heard mm -hmm. a moment ago, uh, there's a lot of healing in that kind of like minstrel healing kind of thing in the music too. It's more than just uh, words that, that go one way, the, the vertical or horizontal, it's really just touching heaven and earth. What's uh, did you experience that growing up, or was that kind of, uh, you know, that is that just a gifting that maybe you've been blessed with? Um, well, I grew up, that's a great question. I grew up, um, my dad is a producer. He's been in Christian music. Yes, we've heard of your dad. Since the 70s. <laughs> His name's Brown Bannister. I'm a big fan. And, um, and so I grew up um, seeing that, hearing stories from him that he would share, like with me from artists, mm. about songs deeply encouraging people, changing people's lives. Mm. And I thought that was amazing from the time I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think for me, um, what's the power of a song, I used to write heartbreak songs in college and I'd sing them <laughs> in the stairwell of my dorm. And um, inevitably I'd have my eyes closed, you know, I was there so I wouldn't wake up my roommate. And I'd have my eyes closed and I would look up and there would be girls mm. lining the stairwell. Really? And mm -hmm. um, inevitably what would happen after that is some of them would sit down and be like, thank you for singing that song. This is what's going on in my life. And I was just like, you can, you're, you want to tell me your story because I played a song? I love that. And so mm -hmm. it connects people's stories and um, and to be any part of encouraging a weary heart, I, I just want to say yes to that, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think I saw, I caught that vision from the time I was a very little girl mm -hmm. and then saw it in college and then um, just wanted to continue to be a part of that story of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And I guess you, you were able to develop that, um, you know, that in you as a result of singing with your husband, Drew. That's right. Yeah. Okay. You kind of swore I'd never marry a musician, actually. <laughs> I was like, you know, you I love playing. I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to be a professional musician because I saw as a kid, too, it was yeah. hard on families. Yeah. You had to travel sure. a lot. And um, I remember saying, I, sw I am never going to marry a musician. And I also swore I wouldn't marry my best friend, who's Drew, who's Aww. a musician. So Aww. swearing doesn't work great for me. <laughs> um, but it, uh, it has been so sweet. I was an eighth grade English teacher, and he convinced me to quit my job and join him on the road. And I think we kind of thought it'd be a year long diversion. Mm -hmm. And um, God just kept opening door mm -hmm. after door after door. And so seven years later, wow. here we are still doing music. Mm -hmm. and, and this is your first solo project. This is my first full length solo project. Okay. So, um, you know, it's really, my husband is the one who all but made me quit our band so I could write mm -hmm. this music. Mm -hmm. um, he was sort of hearing what's coming out of me and our band's in the Americana folk kind of world. And so mm -hmm. songs that are more blatantly about Jesus, we sing truth, but songs that are more blatantly about Jesus don't necessarily fit in with our band. And he was like, mm -hmm. babe, you gotta chase this down. Like yeah. I love wow. this stuff that's coming out of you. Yeah. And you know, a lot of it, I just sit in God's word and I look at a promise that I say, mm. oh, I think this is true. I hope it is. Mm. I really want it to be. I think it is. I've seen it to be true in the past, but I need to know that it's going to be true in the future. So help my unbelief, Lord. And that's where I write a lot of my songs from. Mm -hmm. And so kind of sitting in God's word and let music come out. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine that makes it, I, I mean, I'm sure it's labor intensive, but that makes it easier to get that authenticity from oh, God, from that the is, Holy Spirit. It, you know what? It, that's there's no thing I'd, I'd rather do than sit in his presence. And, I, and someone asked me um, at a show last night, um, you know, you're very honest and vulnerable in your music. And I spent years being the opposite of that. Really? Um, mm. I really did. I was a perfectionist performer. Mm. And you put a, a perfectionist in a job, in a career where it's her job to perform, and you land yourself in intensive counseling <laughs> in a couple of years, which is what I did. And it was the best thing ever because my counselor kept saying, where there's truth, there's freedom. Mm -hmm. Where there's truth, there's freedom. And the truth is hard sometimes. Mm. Y'all know that. Mm -hmm. um, but but I all of a sudden had this invitation to be fully known by God and fully loved. Mm -hmm. And so I just never want to go back to that. But when you're in his presence, in his word, you're being reminded that you are you belong to him. You've been called to a story that's bigger than yourself. And so 
it gives you a lot more freedom when you know that you're loved to be real about the parts that are right. not perfect right. because you're like, well, that's the story. God loves me anyway, yeah. even when yeah. I screw it all up and I do a lot, you know? And so. that, that really, I mean, that's what hits the hearts of people that are listening right. to the music too because we're all in that position. You know, we're all in that, we sp all in know. that space. Yeah. We all know. And for some reason, and I don't know why, no one told me this as a little girl growing up in the church, but I thought that following Jesus was about being good and right. strong. Mm -hmm. and. Yes, that's it, because he gives us strength. But he also says, in your weakness, I am strong. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that I've seen to be true more than anything, because everybody knows what it is to be weak, weak. Mm -hmm. and to need help and yeah. rescuing. So um, it's been such a joy. I think there's like, um, C.S. Lewis, I think, said, the beginning of true friendship and true relationship is me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've loved um, getting to connect with other people and being open. All of a sudden, other people go, oh, yeah. me, me too. too. Yeah. So. Okay, so Ellie, before I let you go, we have about 30 seconds. I want to say congratulations to you. You are one of the World Pulse uh, Festival singers. You're going to I'm be so with excited. us on July 12th. Girl, <laughs> girl, wait. girl. I can't wait to hear you. I'm sure our viewers, our listeners are going to just flock to the stage when you come on. You have an You're awesome, so I love your awesome raspy voice. Oh, I love anything you. that's different. To connect with Ellie, go to ellieholcomb.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her project as sure as the sun. And still to come, Ellie performs new music from her project in Studio B. But up next, Pastor David E. Summerall continues with part four of Walking on the Water. I want to do that too. That's harvest. <laughs> Look at all these children. This is the first grade class at St. Michael's. It's a school that wasn't in existence a little over a year ago. These children are here because they are refugees from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Today, you're providing a hot daily meal to these kids. You are the hands and feet of Jesus, touching them with God's love each and every day. If it wasn't for your support, we couldn't do this work. These children would not be fed. Call that number you see on the screen right now or go to feedthehungry.org. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get mineral concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health, omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function, Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamins, and you get Sol U C for a strong immune system. That's mineral concentrate, omega-3, Vita Sprouts, and Sol U C. An incredible value for only $59.95. And if you act now, shipping is free. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from Making Healthy Choices. Hi, I'm Chuck Freebie, and we're in the vault where we store hundreds of hours of Dr. Summerall's teaching. And I'm Dr. Harold Hayes, and Chief Development Officer here at LaCie Broadcasting. Today, we'd like to introduce you to a brand new program called Endowment Partners. Like Partners in Faith, your monthly gift will go to support the many outreach ministries of LaCie Broadcasting. And like Partners in Faith, we want to give back into your life for a monthly gift of at least $100, we will be sending you a free DVD of Dr. Summerall's teaching every single month. As you can see behind me, we have an extensive collection of Dr. Summerall's teachings, and now that collection can be yours. Show it to yourself at home, share it with your home study group, or even better, give it to a friend in need. So please consider joining us as a LaCie Endowment Partner. Dial 1-800-365-3732 or visit us online at PartnerInFaith.com. We're standing here again at the Sea of Galilee, one of the most peaceful places on earth and maybe my favorite place on earth just to come and be. Talking about the classic passage, are you a person who sits back and waits for Jesus to solve all your problems? Or are you a person who engages with Jesus and walks on the water? Are you a waiter or are you a participator? Are you a waiter 
or are, are you a water walker? Now I want to talk to you today, building on what we've already been studying earlier this week about the challenges of being a water walker, the challenges of being a participator. Now the 11 in the boat never had to deal with these challenges, okay? They had all the same problems, they had all the same promises, they had all the same fears, they all foresaw the same possibilities, but when it came to the challenges, you know, as long as you're staying in the boat, there's nothing to think about. As long as you're staying in the boat, there's no challenges. As long as you're staying in the boat, life is easy. There's no stress. There's no pressure. It's like one pastor came to me one day. He said, Pastor Summerall, I would like a ministry with no stress, a stress-free success. And I laughed at him. I said, it doesn't exist. There is no such thing as stress-free living or stress-free success. Because if you're going to be a water walker, you've got some challenges that you need to face. Now let me deal with two categories of challenges. The first is the category of desire. Verse 28, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. The first challenge that you have to face is the challenge of prayer. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot just make things up in your head and go do them and call that faith. That's not faith, that's presumption. One of my favorite things to teach about this is what I call knocking prayer. Jesus said, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Well, you don't knock on a door that's down the street. You knock on a door that's right in front of you. Right in front of you in life, God will place a door of opportunity. Right in front of you in life, God will place a door of possibilities. Now that is when you pray. When you stand there in front of a door of opportunity, you stand in front of a door of possibility, that is when you pray. Jesus, if that's you, can I come to you? It was a prayer of faith. Not a prayer of presumption. It was a prayer of faith. Now, if you look at this like a little child, how many times did my little girl all through the years look at me watching me do something, saying, Daddy, can I try? I was taping a radio program one day at the house. Daddy, can I try? When she was little, now not after she became a teenager or something, but when she was just, you know, five, six years old, four years old, she would sit on my lap. We'd come home late at night after service, and we'd get inside of our little village where there's no traffic. And she said, Daddy, can I try driving? And I'd sit her on my lap, and I'd help her with the steering wheel, and we would drive the last block home up a straight road. So, oh, that was dangerous. Relax. I'm a daddy. You did the same thing. Little children want to do what they see their fathers doing. Daddy, I want to try one of my favorite T.L. Osborne stories is after he had failed in the ministry, thinking of T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne failing is beyond my thoughts, but when they were young in the ministry, they'd failed. And then they went to a healing crusade, and their prayer to God was, can I do this? Now, this is how we live our lives. We see Jesus doing something, and there is a desire in our hearts. As we stand before the door of possibility, as we stand before the door of opportunity, we have desire in our hearts. This is the first challenge, to pray, to get on your knees and pray. Don't just jump because you see Jesus doing something and you think, well, I'm going to go do it. Now, that's presumption. That's not faith. That's presumption. But you see the possibility. You restrain yourself. You face first the challenge of prayer. Then you have to face, secondly, the challenges of methodology. You have to ask yourself some questions because, forgive me, Peter didn't have a book that he could go to the bookstore and buy. Ten steps on how to walk on the water. Peter had no clue, how do I begin this? For instance, think of the decisions that Peter had to make that way. Let me see, do I wear sandals or no sandals? Hmm. Do I take off my outer garments or leave them on? Hmm. Do I dive into the water and then climb up on top of the water? Do I jump in the water? Do I get out one foot at a time, two feet at a time? How do I get out of the boat? He had a lot of decisions to make about methodology. Do I wait for the next wave to pass or do I step out during this wave? Do I wait for the wind to calm down a little bit or do I not, not look at the wind? At some point, you've got to confront the questions of methodologies. Yes, you see Jesus doing something, but you don't necessarily know how he started. How did he start? Did he walk into the water up to his neck and then rise up on top of it? 
Peter had no clue. He'd never seen this done before. This is a challenge, and this is a little stressful. Now, notice, in each one of these questions, you have to take a few minutes of time. You have to pray, and now you have to make a series of decisions. All right, I see the possibility of what can be done. I prayed. I feel Jesus telling me that I can do what he's doing. Now, how do I begin to do this? What methodologies will I employ? Take time to think it through. Take time to plan a little bit. Don't be in a big rush. Take a few moments, think it through, and pray. Then start doing what you've never done before. Join us in June. It's the next trip to Israel. We want to see you here so you can see this in person. You can't go unless you get that free information package. So dial the number on the screen, go to the website, get that information so you can join me here in Jerusalem. Join us in June for a trip of a lifetime. take a moment to catch up on what's happening in Israel and its neighbors in the Middle East. Uh, a lot of news headlines coming across the waters. Brian, things have flared up in Gaza with rocket fire and retaliation again there. If you can please give us an update on what's happening right now at this hour. Right. Well, as you can see, I'm indoors. Um, that's because it's raining. 
Uh, it's raining throughout the country, but that's not stopping the conflict that's uh, emulating out of Gaza and within Gaza. Unfortunately, today we've had about seven uh, projectiles fired into Israel. Uh, some have landed in populated areas. Uh, yesterday we saw about 70 uh, land in is inside Israel. Just over 10% of those are reaching populated areas. Today's rocket fire included Ashkelon and Ashdod. So um, Israel will continue its Air Force bombardment of Islamic Jihad sites and uh, People's Resistance Committee sites. They are the two parties within Gaza who are responsible for the rocket fire. Hamas has got to get these guys under control. And uh, Hamas is putting itself susceptible to Israeli airstrikes if they don't do something about containing these militants. Now, at this hour, what's happening is that Egypt has been in touch both with Palestinian militants in Gaza and with Israeli government officials here in Jerusalem to try to work out some type of a ceasefire. Let's hope that it'll work out. Uh, amen. That, that is our hope. Uh, Brian, it's a common question, I'm sure, but you can provide some insight into it, is why do militants fire off these rockets when they know that... Uh, they're fairly primitive, and there's a much more powerful and much more accurate Israeli response that's waiting for them. All I can say is it's a twisted logic. It's unfortunate. Um, uh, it's not logical at all, really. Uh, it's just a twisted way of thinking that you can maintain some type of balance of power by uh, letting off these rockets. And, it, it, you know, these rockets that have been let off the 70 or so yesterday and those of today, are in revenge uh, for what has happened with the deaths of the three uh, Islamic Jihad militants. But um, why did those guys set off the rockets? You know, were they trying to draw attention to their displeasure of the peace process moving forward? Perhaps, but we know from Secretary of State John Kerry that the trust between the Israelis and the Palestinians right now is at its lowest ever. So it doesn't make sense that they would risk uh, doing that. They're just making themselves known and, again, trying to uh, prick Israel, if you will, provoke them into some type of action uh, to which the Palestinians can rally around and say, we are being mistreated. It really doesn't serve any purpose at all. Yeah. Uh, Brian, a little bit earlier in the week, you uh, brought up the news about laws that are being pushed through in Israel's Knesset, but uh, not to the uh, uh, enjoyment of the Prime Minister. Can you share any further developments on uh, what's going on with that legislative process? Right. Well, yesterday we saw the passing of the referendum bill, which means now that it is a basic law. It's virtually unchangeable. Um, it, it is a law that is uh, etched into the stone, if you will, that any future peace agreement, uh, the government, the Israeli government, this term, Bibi Netanyahu, has to take before the people any type of an agreement with the Palestinians in swapping lands. And this makes it much more difficult for Mr. Netanyahu or any government after him that needs to negotiate peace. <coughs> it, it gives them less political uh, clout. It gives them less maneuverability in the political arena, diplomatically as well. Uh, it, it just makes everything a lot harder for leadership to make those tough decisions uh, that need to be made. Uh, it seems like that is a, a moderate step or a step towards moderation and maybe diffusing some of the conflict that surrounds uh, the building up of, of the settlements. It's, the idea seems to be a sound one, though, doesn't it, uh, that the people of the land decide their fate? Well, sure. To our... Um, to our ears, uh, to the excuse me, the democratic uh, ear, it sounds all well and good. But what's behind the scenes? You know, you just heard me say the diplomatic and political wiggle room is a lot less now because why? They have to consider how their constituencies would respond. And when you've got basically about 12 people who are making the nuts and bolts decisions, that's both on the Israeli side and the Palestinian side combined, they're the ones who are really making the decisions for a permanent settlement agreement. And they're supported by about 140 people or so, uh, both uh, in the Palestinian Authority, the Israeli government, and uh, the international community who are in the know about things. 
When you have to balance in what will my constituency say, how will they react, well, then it makes it a lot more difficult to make those necessary decisions that are needed right now, those compromises, painful decisions, to bring the parties together to make a final agreement. And, and it's a daunting task. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Brian. Always enjoy your uh, input and insight. Uh, the understatement of the year, this is not a, a simple solution. There's, this is a complex problem that uh, is being dealt with there in the Middle East, and our thoughts and prayers are, are with all there, those that are there. If you'd like to connect with Brian Bush, you can go to his blog every Tuesday and Friday at harvest-tv.com and also at our Facebook page for a little bit more in-depth insight into what's going on in the land of Israel and its surrounding neighbors as well. But right now, though, we're going to go to our prayer line center with Valerie and Pastor Charles. Thanks so much, Stefan. You know, there are problems and they don't always have a super uh, a simple solution to them, but God can help us. He can be there for us and he wants to be, but we yes. have to ask him. So give us a call if you need prayer. The number is there on the screen. Pastor Charles, people are calling in from around the world, the United States, other countries requesting prayer yeah. for some very difficult problems. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of times, Valerie, when, when we do get callers, they, they call with the understanding that they need prayer, but a lot of times they actually don't know how to pray. Okay. They actually don't know it. And when I say how to pray, I don't mean they don't know how to get on their knees and call on God, but a lot of times they don't know the direction to go in okay. as far as, you know, what to address in the prayer. Well, thank and our operators help them. Well, that's what I was about to say. Thank mm -hmm. God for our operators yes. here at Prayer Line. Right. And we are in the book of John. And 1 John, John, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Yes, 1 John, and we're going to be in the second chapter today. We're going to read verses 15 through 17. We're going to be reading out of the New Living Testament today. Uh, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. But when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away mm -hmm. along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. You know, I love this Bible verse, uh, these verses, <laughs> um, you know, and it's just a warning to me yep. and to other believers, you know. Mm -hmm. We can think of times where we probably fell into one of those categories, love not the world, neither the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. And so this kind of gives us the direction that we need. Yeah, and what helps uh, in, this, in this particular version, um, it takes that word lust out mm -hmm. and it puts, substitutes it with the word craving. And the word craving better fits uh, because most of us think that lust is such an extreme <laughs> yes. word, you know, but it's really not. And that's simply what it means is a craving. We have desires. We have desires that are not consistent with the desires that God mm -hmm. has for us. And those are things that are turn, that turns into lust. And what we need to do is we need to realize finally, Valerie, that, hey, what God wants for us is the best for us. That's right. And sometimes yeah. when we think of that word lust, we just think of sex. Absolutely. When Absolutely. he's saying there's some cravings mm -hmm. beyond that, in mm -hmm. addition to that, in addition um, to that, that can cause you to fall. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's based on things we see, mm -hmm. especially things we see that others have. Okay. You know, so you know, so it takes us into some doorways that we certainly don't want to enter into. Okay, let's get yeah. to some of our prayer our, requests. Our prayer requests. We have a we have a partner in faith uh, from Indiana that says, please pray for my healing. I I fell and sustained an injury, oh. leaving my face and teeth numb. Mm -hmm. Then we have another partner in faith, uh, Karina, says, please agree with me as I pray for my family's salvation and restoration, healing, and greater doors of opportunity for a prosperous future. And then we have Benji, who called us from Nigeria, oh, uh, wants to be closer to God and is ready to be delivered from a powerful spirit of lust, <laughs> mm -hmm. consistent of pornography, fornication, and other forms of perversion. Look at that. Yeah, we were just talking uh, about that. We were that. just talking about mm -hmm. it, yeah. 
Yeah. Would you pray for his pastor? Yes, yeah, Father in heaven, we thank you thank today, you, Lord Father. God, for all the things that you've done. But more importantly, Father, for what you're about to do for those thank ones you, who are calling in and emailing us here at Prayer Line. Father, we're asking you today, thank Lord you, God, Lord. to move on their behalf. Father, they need to be delivered. Some need to be saved, Lord God, and some thank even you, healing Jesus. in their bodies. But we know, Lord God, that you're able. And we're asking you today, Lord God, to show favor in their direction. And we'll praise and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give us a call if you need prayer. You can call us. You can go online. The number is 1-800-365-3732. You can also send in your prayer request to prayer at lacy.com. Log on to worldharvest.com and send in that mail, your prayer request through the mail at 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Take delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. All during the week this week, I've been teaching you about learning to participate with Jesus and be a part of the miracles that He wants to bring about in your life. But the first thing that you and I need to do to participate with Jesus is to receive what He did for us. I'm standing here at the Sea of Galilee where so many of His miracles were done and cities in which He rebuked, Bethsaida, Chorazon, all the miracles that they saw, but they never chose to believe. I wonder if you're sitting here today listening to me and you're a person, you, you know all about God, but you've never really made a decision to believe in Jesus and to surrender your life to Him. If you're listening to me today and your life is not right with God, I want to challenge you. He didn't just live a life and do miracles to entertain people. He did all of this for our salvation. He did all of this to change us from the inside out. We don't have to live like we've been living. We don't have to continue with the destinies that we have. He has a whole beautiful life laid out for us for each and every one of us. He has good works laid out for us in advance. He has a beautiful life laid out for the rest of our eternity. But the first step to that new life is to accept what He did for us. We have to confront our sin. Now, I know that's not a popular word today. We want to be saved from our circumstances, but the first thing we need to be saved from is our sin. Well, you, who are you to judge me? <laughs> I'm nobody. But we all need to, we all know ourselves, please. We all look at ourselves in the mirror. We all know the things we've done wrong. We all have a conscience that has convicted us. So rather than fight over the word sin, let's just accept the fact that we've all screwed up in life. I mean, and we have. And that's what Jesus came and died for, to take the punishment of those sins so that you and I could have a beautiful new life. He rose again for that new life. I want to challenge you today. If, you, if you've never turned your life to Christ, I want you to follow me in a simple prayer right now. It's a beautiful life. I remember the day I prayed this, prayed this prayer in a broom closet of a Baptist student union building down in a little town called Troy, Alabama. My life was changed, and I've never been the same. Today, your life can start brand new. Follow me in this simple prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I ask your forgiveness for all of my sins. I ask that you change my heart. I ask that you change my life. From this day forward, I will follow you and serve you in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I'd like you to call the number on the screen right now. We've got something that we'd like to send you to help you get started in your spiritual life, to help you begin to move forward in this new life that God has for you. God bless you. And remember, don't ever let anybody take this away from you. God loves you. God does love you. And today, if you'd like to experience that love, if you want to just reach out to Him, as Pastor Dave was just sharing there, it begins with, with a heartfelt prayer. It begins with a pouring out of yourself towards the Lord, saying, God, I have messed up. I have sinned. I have made mistakes. I've done things my own way, but I want you to come into my life. I want you to lead me and guide me this day. We've got wonderful people that are, that are volunteering at our prayer line center right now. Please give them a call, 
365-3732. If you'd like to experience what it means to know that your sins are forgiven and that uh, you've got a brand new, not just a lease on life, you've got a brand new kind of life when you hook up with Jesus and when you hook up with the Almighty. If you'd like to email, it's prayer at lacy.com and you can also go to worldharvest.com. But if it's specifically for just starting a new walk with, with the Lord, please give us a call. We'd love to connect with you today. And Valerie, uh, Pastor Dave mentioned where he was and when he oh, was, yes. when he prayed and, and invited Christ to into his heart and life. I know where I was, January 6, 1986, about one o'clock in the morning in a, in a, in a, in a bar. And uh, I'm sure you know where you were too. Yes, yes, I was visiting with my mom. Uh, I think it was August 28th, 1986. Mm -hmm. Came to faith in Christ. You know, I often say on this show, I was a happy heathen, mm -hmm. had no reason to get saved. I thought my life was great. And then I heard a song, the lyrics drew my heart all day long. I could feel the Holy Spirit, Spirit tugging on my heart. And then the, the tug was so strong that I threw my hands up. Mm the universal sign for surrender. <laughs> and I said, okay, God. And I prayed that prayer go. and my life has been an adventure. I will, I never want to go back. Absolutely. Just and thanking God for being saved. Amen. And that prayer is that beginning part. It's not, That's it's right. not the thing, but it's the expression of your heart and that surrender. Jesus, I surrender. Come help, direct, lead me, love me, guide me, move me. Uh, that kind of affection towards the Lord, you'll see a huge change in your life from this point on. Thank you for joining us on Harvest. We'll see you tomorrow. Paul the Apostle wrote to his beloved Philippian friends, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Well, that's exactly how we feel about you, our partners in faith. We thank God every day for you, for your prayers, and for your faithful month-by-month -month financial support. Dr. Lester Sumrall founded Lacey Broadcasting because God gave him a vision to win one million souls for Jesus. He knew he would need a faith that moves mountains, but more than that, he knew he would need thousands of committed partners who stood with him to support this huge missionary effort. Every day, Lacey Broadcasting is reaching millions of lost men, women, and children who are seeking hope. Your loyal monthly partner in faith commitment makes it all possible. Please don't grow weary in well-doing. You are bringing hope where there is no hope. Thank you, and God bless you. Be better prepared to fight off colds and viruses with Making Healthy Choices Super Immune Pack. This immune-enhancing pack includes Maximum Immunity Guard and Beta Glucan Plus, two great products containing an organic blend of mushrooms and astragalus root for immune defense, mineral concentrate with selenium and zinc to increase immune resistance, and eucalyptus oil to help revitalize the respiratory tract. Call now and this package can be yours for only $45.95 and for a limited time, shipping is free. Call 800-965-2345 or visit mhclife.com. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.